Take it easy, easy. God already loves you completely. Take it easy, easy. Rest in the shade of his wing. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, it is good to have you with us. I'm here today with some friends that will be really introducing themselves for the first time. And we wanted to gather and simply just share some thoughts and some stories, perhaps um, some context to, uh, firstly today, why we are a inclusive community. Why are we inclusive people? Why do we um, support, uh, 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 you know, the queer and trans community? And perhaps offer some thoughts of why why be inclusive pastors today, and I, we think these are things that matter in our world, and we want to just kind of offer our thoughts. So before I you know go too long, I, I wonder if if maybe we'll start with you, Grace. You want to kind of share a little bit about yourself, so we sort of know who who's talking here today. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, my name is Grace, and uh, born and raised in Hawaii. Um, I went to Kaiser, if for those that care about yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, I, right after undergrad, I went to UH, I moved to Los Angeles, and I was there for 17 years. And while I was there, I attended Fuller Seminary, got my uh, MDiv. And um, rather than go into parish ministry, I ended up uh, becoming a chaplain. Mm -hmm. um, so I started my chaplaincy career there and then moved back to Hawaii. Um, it's almost eight years now. Um, and uh, was a chaplain here, served at Kapiolani and Straub. Um, and then I found myself being called into parish ministry um, almost two years now. And so now I'm an associate minister here at Calvary by the Sea. Um, and so I, I live in town with my wife, Debbie. Um, we've been married for uh, two years, a little over two years. Um, and, you know, be, for us as um, a queer couple, mm -hmm. yeah. I think when we were talking about finding a community to belong to, inclusivity was obviously the number one criteria. Right, right. Um, and if I'm honest, I did not think we would find a church. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so when we walked into Calvary by the Sea, it it was a huge blessing, yeah. a bit of a surprise, and um, we immediately felt like this was our community. Mm -hmm. This is where God is calling us to be. Um, and find, found myself being called to serve. Mm -hmm. So that was really unexpected. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was thinking about your upbringing, right? I mean, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I grew up going to a United Methodist Church, uh, a Korean American church with my parents. Um, huge Korean church, very conservative. Um, I was very involved. Um, I loved being part of ministry. But the one thing that really made me struggle with my faith was my sexuality because mm. uh, we were taught that being gay was wrong right. that um, being gay means you're going to hell mm. so all through my all throughout my high school and college years I that was a struggle mm. I struggled with that and eventually I decided it was too hard if church is a is um, some place where I'm not wanted and accepted and loved, then I need to remove myself mm -hmm. from church. And so I walked away, um, but I never walked away from God mm -hmm. and um, found myself being called to go to seminary mm -hmm. um, with the very intention of what does the Bible really say? Because mm -hmm. I can't believe a God who is a God about love right. says anything about gay people going to hell in the Bible. 
So I had to go to seminary. I had to figure it out for myself. And um, when what I realized was it doesn't have all the answers and that's okay. But God loves everybody. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Mm-hmm. Uh, another friend we have with us today here uh, is also Eric. So Eric, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about yourself as well and just, you know, where you where you live, where you, you know, a little bit about, you know, what you do for a living, family, sure. kind of stuff like that. Um, my name's Eric. I am, um, you know, serve part-time at the church at Calvary by the Sea, working with our youth and our young people. Um... I grew up in Alabama, so I grew up in the South, was born in Texas, but but raised in Alabama. Um, Went to college at a small Christian college in in Alabama, and then uh, then went to seminary in Richmond at a Baptist school. Uh, I was raised up Southern Baptist, um, but then in in my uh, college years, dissented from that and moved into the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, which is, uh, uh, you know, supportive of women in ministry, a little bit more progressive, if you want to say. Um, uh, I am married to my wife, Christy, almost 20 years this year. Yeah. Which is crazy to okay. think about. Okay. We're, we're getting old. You can see the gray hair in the chin. Um, we've got two kids. Um, one who's just started today in high school. Oh, Today's her first day of school. Okay. And then the other um, in middle school. And um, I, I don't know where this fits in with our, you know, dis- discussing our um, our backgrounds. But, you know, when... when uh, when my wife and I um, were looking at, you know, looking for a church, we also were looking for a church that was um, inclusive because um, from our perspective, we, we wanted our kids to have that perspective. Mm. They, we wanted them yeah. to, um, to not know what church is like outside of an inclusive space. Mm. Um, and so uh, when we found Calvary, um, it was um, it was very uh, you know refreshing to find a, a place like this. It was also um, still a little bit of a challenge for us because we didn't grow up in this kind of context. Sure. Um, you know, both of us being raised in and in, uh, southern Southern Baptist um, culture mm-hmm. that's not mm-hmm. welcoming and not inclusive. Um, this is a very is a very different. Yeah place um, to worship so um so for us it was um it was um great for us to be able to 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 be able to share the pew with people who are not like us um and to know that uh, you know everyone is welcome everybody's loved um that everyone has a voice which is very important i think for inclusivity um that we're not just making space well, we're not just saying that all are welcome, but then um, excluding their voice. But mm-hmm. but all people are are welcome to to have their identity. Yeah. To have their um, to to be able to say this is who I am and be be loved and welcomed. Now I know Eric. You also have tons of experience, right, in ministry. You worked at different churches, in different parts of the country. Can can you share a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, uh, my first internship was at my home church. So um, when I first felt like I ha- I was called into ministry, I didn't look very far from you know from my own church uh, to to look to serve, and um, it was interesting because I grew up in the context and yet felt like there was something wrong That's about it. Yeah. But I didn't have the language for it. I didn't understand what that meant. Um, and and you have to remember, I mean, gosh, we were. I, I grew up in in a insulated community. You know, yeah, yeah, there wasn't yeah. diversity. There was, uh, you know, we grew up in a time where, um, you know, the common, uh, you know, the joke is to call someone gay. You know, it's like mm-hmm. we didn't. It, yeah. there, it wasn't offensive. Huh. Um, you know. Uh, to make fun of someone in that way. So yeah. 
but so I knew there was something wrong. Right. And yeah, I had no language. I went and worked at a summer camp. Yeah. This one summer, they yeah. they needed a videographer. I, I happen to know how to use iMovie. Okay. <laughs> and and shout out iMovie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and that camp um, was the very first summer I had ever heard a female preach, wow. ever in my life. I was a sophomore in college. So um, that that camp was my first introduction to the cooperative Baptist world. Right, right. And the first time I'd ever even knew that there were any any other Baptists besides Southern Baptists. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and it was the first time I was like, okay, yeah, I can get on board with this. This is, I really, you know, at first I was like, why am I listening to this woman preacher? <laughs> <laughs> and then as the summer went along, I was like, this is actually great. Mm-hmm. I, I think I've, align more with this theology. Um, so I ended up leaving my home church okay. went, that. yeah. And went into, I found another church that was local mm-hmm. close to my, close to the school I was attending and was able to intern with a youth minister there. Okay. It, it was like this, the beginning of reshaping my mind, mm. reshaping my theology, giving me a new language mm. And, um, and it kind of set me on a path to where I would go to seminary Mm -hmm. later on. Mm -hmm. Um, and then from there it was, I was working in churches that were part of that cooperative Baptist Mm -hmm. world. And, um, I did full-time ministry for about 10 years Mm -hmm. and then realized it wasn't always for me. (laughs) So, um, ended up leaving full-time ministry, uh, shortly before the pandemic, which is, Mm. you know, perfect timing, right? (laughs) (laughs) And made my way into the, um, into the trades, uh, construction. And, uh, and now I own my own company doing property restoration. Nice. But, but feel fortunate that I am able to still have a connection to ministry in some way. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for sharing both of you, Eric and Grace. Um, I'm just going to quickly do mine as quick as, like, quick as I can. My introduction is simply this. I think I feel I come from, uh, I always say, from praying grandmothers because uh, some of my first memories are of my grandmother praying and praying. Uh, and I'm talking about old school because I grew up Pentecostal, right? So, you know, you were, uh, they're, they're kneeling at their bedside on their knees at four in the morning, right? Everything's dark, but they're praying and they're seeking God. And I didn't quite understand it as a boy. <clears throat> growing up and my grandmother um would usually you know in the morning when i would wake up would put like extend her hands over me like this and <clears throat> she would just say like you know a blessing upon me every morning right and i still didn't understand that as a boy uh we actually do a grandma blessing here at the church now and I, as i'm always reminded of that at the end as a benediction we do that but that's kind of where i come from and and then my parents um my dad was a roman catholic and he would go to his church and my mom was an evangelical Pentecostal. She would go to her church and then I would kind of go one week with my dad, one week with my mom. I was baptized in the, in the Roman Catholic Church. And then finally, my dad had this conversion moment. Um, Jimmy Swagger, mm. <laughs> you know, the awesome. televangelist, yeah. Yeah. you know, shout out Jimmy Swagger, right? He's like, you know, my dad's watching this and just has this like moment of like throwing himself to, you know, on his knees and just like crying and feeling like this conviction in his life my dad miraculously stopped drinking just a complete 180 and he started just taking up the ministry of preaching and he was always a prophetic preacher uh and 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 we were part of this kind of mega church in los angeles downtown la right across from macarthur park and you know two three thousand people and this was a spanish-speaking church like in you know in the 80s it's just unheard of but that's what was happening, and I kind of grew up in that context. And eventually, we, we became an American Baptist church. And um, and so we had some Pentecostalism, some American Baptist, and then somewhere in my youth, I kind of made it over to the Foursquare Church and had more Pentecostalism. And uh, and then, yeah, and then eventually found my way into uh, mainline denominations. I came back to the American Baptist church and then served at a Methodist church, at a Reformed church, and then 
planted a church uh, with the Covenant Church, um, which is an evangelical denomination. And then, long story short, I ended up in the ELCA, the Lutheran uh, tradition. Uh, and I've done all my studies to Fuller Seminary. So, again, another shout out to Fuller Seminary um, in Pasadena. And um, and then did some Lutheran studies, which Grace, I know you're doing yeah, now. You're going to be doing your yeah, yeah. your year of studies there. But um, yeah, so that's sort of my background. You know, uh, married Brenda. We have three kids also, and my 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 oldest and middle daughters. They're both in. Uh, they both go to college in New York City in Manhattan uh, area, Bronx area actually. Um, I always get confused because it's like Manhattan and Bronx is like really close to each other where the school is at. So. Uh, and then Hansel, my oldest, is uh, my youngest, is a senior this year. Can you believe he's gonna start his senior year at same same Kaiser High School Kaiser, that as yes. Grace, right? Uh, so that's the family married to my wife Brenda, who is um, beautiful and smart and wild and all those things wrapped up into one. <laughs> so um, that's that's the family, and I am the senior pastor of Calvary by the Sea, and love the stories you guys have already told about how you got here and how you kind of made it to this space. Um, I guess like my question is, why should we as followers of Jesus, as let's just get to like the core, right? Like let's get straight to the core. Like as followers of Jesus, um, why should we be inclusive of queer and trans individuals, uh, of couples, of people who are part of the LGBTQI community? why why should we be just like if someone's out there and says i'm a christian um but i'm anti-gay you know i'm anti-trans or or a christian who's out there like just i love jesus because I, I just want to throw it out there already like i love jesus like i think you guys love jesus too and we follow jesus and we've grown up all of our we've given our lives to like this 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 jesus movement right this this church um but why why as followers of Jesus should be be so inclusive of, of, of this community that um, has been rejected and hurt for so long? Thoughts? I think for me, I think it comes down to this idea of grace. Mm. And we were taught in church that, you know, it's, just, it's this uh, gift that's freely given to us and that um, it's not because of what we've done but it's because of what jesus has done for us that we're given this grace and for me if that's what jesus is about then who's to say that that grace isn't for everyone mm -hmm. then why are we limiting putting limits on god's grace mm -hmm. um that that's that's the bottom line for me mm -hmm. and if I'm wrong, I'd rather be wrong and say grace is for all than say I'm right and it's only for a certain group of people. Yeah, it reminded me of Eddie Murphy. Like I think it says like one of his like coming 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 to America. He says like uh, if if being wrong, what is it like? If if being wrong is something like if if I'm wrong. I don't want to be right or something. Right. I'm trying. Yeah. This is yeah. so bad. I'm yeah. so bad at these things, but it's something like that. Yeah, I'd rather be wrong. You know. Uh, so it's just like I think you're right. It's like how do you just have the con the conviction to believe like if if this is really wrong, like I don't want to be right because yeah. this feels super right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah, I don't know what do you think. Like, like I think like you know the the word authority is a lot, right? Like for me to say that someone is not welcome at the table. Yeah. That they're not welcome to be a part of a community. Yeah. Because of who they are means that I am placing a certain kind of authority on my shoulders that I don't feel like I have. Yeah. Yeah. I I, and I don't know that I don't know that we anybody has that authority. God has that authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the authority that we see in Christ is, is love and grace yeah so um, I don't want to be the referee <laughs> yeah right 
Yeah, I, I think I, I like when I'm reminded of of just of this this dynamic, right? That's very evident. There are like entire denominations who broke have who have yeah. been torn up and divided by such an issue, right? And yet, when I read just the Genesis account, let's just start there. Like the Genesis account of creation, you see an identity that is clearly um, built upon the divine, right? Created in the image of the three, right? In one, it's like this clear um, marker of distinction that is so innate in the faces of every person. Like we cannot escape it. Every single person carries the and bears the image of the divine on their face. And then for us to be referees or for us to decide who gets grace or no, no grace yeah. or love or no love or acceptance or no acceptance um, or inclusion or not inclusion, it's like, wow. Like, yeah, you just took on, right, the, yeah. the, the place of God. You're stepping in to make that decision for the divine. But maybe not clearly looking at our identity, right? In in you know, I, I, the other place you see this is also in in Galatians, right, where it talks about um, Paul speaking to um, to the people to the Galatians, and, and and he's writing about his modern day categories. He's like, there's no longer yeah, male right. or female, right? Jew or Gentile. You know, he goes down the, this road of the categories of his day, and he says, but we are all one right. in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So even, you know, from the Hebrew Torah, right, to, you know, to the, to the epistles and, and, and the, the writings of Paul, it's like this constant reality that our identity is in Christ, our identity is in God, our, our identity, our resemblance is not in anything else but the divine. And I think to somehow distort all that kind of identity by saying someone's in or out or someone, yeah. you know, um, belongs in heaven or not, I think that's hard. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's a huge leap. I think also you have this idea too, by the way, of being pastors that I think is a, an added layer, right? That as pastors, what, what, what really, shall we say, turned the page for us? Like, when did we go from, because I think we all kind of got to seminaries, but I don't remember in seminary ever being taught, like, you know, it's okay to love gay and trans people or queer people. Yeah. Like, like, I don't, it, it, it was probably not discussed yeah. at, in those kind of, at that level, right? So, like, what, what helped you kind of say, like, wait a minute, this whole thing, <laughs> does it make sense? Like, clearly, and maybe it was a gut feeling, like you were saying, Grace, like, or, or, or was there something else, I guess? Ironically, I went into seminary wanting to find all the answers to all the big questions. And I came out of seminary having more questions than answers. And I realized that it wasn't about trying to figure it all out. It wasn't about trying to have all the answers to the big questions. Mm -hmm. What I realized was there's only one thing that you need to know, and that's God loves you, and God loves everyone. So it sounds like to me like you're almost saying you went in kind of trying to look for that answer with biblical context or biblical or theological kind of underpinnings, but it's like you came out like even with more questions about those biblical passages or that kind of theological uh, yeah. belief. Um, it's my, my video died, but... Uh, okay. If that's okay, if I can still speak as you hopefully yeah, can you can hear me. Up, but no one, no one can give me a straight answer about anything, whether it's the translations, hmm. whether it's the historical contexts, whether it's you know it, it was written so long ago, and no one can give you an absolute straight answer about anything. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and so having questions is normal. 
be in. But, and I realized that's okay. That you can hold these things very loosely and God will still love you. And, and it doesn't matter in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, yeah. But the only truth, again, that I came away with was the fact that, like, Jesus loves you and died for you. Yeah. And God's grace is for all. Mm. That's that's the only real truth that I was able to walk away with. Mm. Um, and that was enough for me. I said, okay. Yeah, yeah. I can I can have millions of questions, but that I that's the only solid foundation I need to say, God, yeah, I'm for you, mm-hmm. and um, I will I will do everything that I can to continue to walk in that faith and in that spirit, regardless of where I go or what kind of ministry that I'm in. Yeah, I want to live yeah. my life like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Um, that's really good. I don't know if you transition, like what kind of turned you back, or not back, but maybe to the other side, shall we say? Yeah, I mean, uh, in college, when I started dating my wife, you know, I was told, oh, my, my brother is gay. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, their family was having a hard time with that. Okay. Um, and so, um, not to pat myself on the back or anything, but I helped, you know, them figure out, and I don't know where it came from, but I, you know, helped them, um, come to terms Mm -hmm. with that and to love and accept him for who he is. But yeah. But I also also heard his story about how his church that he grew up in, that he was born into, not necessarily born into, but was raised sure. in the faith, right? Um, had completely shunned him, mm-hmm. and how hurtful that was to him and his faith, um, to the point where he no longer felt safe to go to any church, mm-hmm. and, and to this day, I, I don't know if he feels safe mm-hmm. it it and i know there are so many stories like that yeah yes that the church is, has completely you know sent out a group of a total uh, you know totally you know, a whole group of people yeah saying you know you're you're loved yeah god loves you mm-hmm. but god doesn't love that part of you and so mm-hmm. therefore you're not welcome here mm-hmm. Um, as a pastor, I, I felt like, um, that's wrong. Like we, we need to create space for all people, but specifically we need to tell those who have been, um, shunned, you know, that Mm -hmm. they are still loved and, and welcome. Right. Um, so I've served in churches that say, you know, all are welcome, all, all, you know, everyone's loved. Yeah. You, you know, they <laughs> have. They may even have. Right. They may even have the rainbow flag, flying. Yeah, you true. know, or you know, distributed or, or uh, um, displayed somewhere. You right, know. Right. Um, and yet, um, there's no representation. Um, or okay, you can. You're welcome to come here, but in order to become a member, you need to accept. You know, uh, admit that you're wrong. That you. Mm-hmm are going to live like a celibate lifestyle or there's all these conditions, right? Um, You're loved, but conditionally you need to change. Um, That's also wrong. You're telling somebody to live a double life. Um, So, um, so yeah, as I, I think as a, as a church, as a pastor, you know, I want people to not only belong, but, be represented, have identity, sure. um, again, to have a voice, to say, this is who I am. Um, it's it's funny, like in a lot of those contexts, uh, if someone were to say, this is who I am, 
it's not, and I think we still hear this today. It's, oh, I don't want, I don't want those people cramming their stuff down my throat. Mm. I don't want to, um, you know, awareness is not, it, simple awareness um, equates trying to force something on someone else. And um, I don't think, I think it's just representation. Mm. It's identifying someone who they are. Right. So, yeah, that's good. I think what you're bordering on there is like, I feel like it's that Holy spirit uh, account that, and what I mean by that is that there is certainly a movement of the spirit that is happening among churches some congregations where they're experiencing this, right? Yeah. Where people of the trans and queer community are coming in and are finding liberation and freedom or belonging or healing, shall we say. And now they're like reconciling themselves with God, mm -hmm. but also reconciling themselves with the church. Right. Yeah. And, and it sort of sounds like we, we see that a lot, I think, here at Calvary, at Calvary by the Sea. I think we see this. And, you know, remember, Pentecostal, right? So Holy Spirit, like, to the max. Like, this is the true, like, healing and restoring of lives, right? Back into a mending, shall we say, of relationship with God mm -hmm. and with church and with other Christians, with pastors, right? And I think this is a reality that there's a flow that is reconciling queer and trans people with the divine, with the church, and it's happening. Um, and it's greatly needed because how many churches are doing the opposite, right? Yeah. They're still hurting the church. I mean, uh, hurting this community. They're still doing harmful things. I mean, just look at the legislation that we see across the nation, right? That's anti-queer and anti-trans and anti-gay, right? It's like, okay, it's interesting to me that they, here's the Holy Spirit doing this work and and, and 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 surely would right because that that is what the holy spirit is comforter you know guide help companion you know it, it's like these terms that we read in scripture advocate that is with us right helping us through this thing and so the spirit is doing a new thing i guess i would say to those who are listening it's like can you not perceive it mm. can you not see it and maybe you can't like maybe you're not in that context but i'm gonna tell you right now like definitely in our tech context and in several other churches that are progressive or at least inclusive, you see people coming to Christ yeah. in, in yeah. a new way. Yeah. And, um, and I think that's an important thing to mention uh, because not, you know, you think about like people who say, well, if it's not in the Bible, then I'm not going to accept it or read it, right? Well, it's like, did you ever think that Moses didn't have a Bible? Abraham didn't have a Bible. What did they have? They had all they had was the voice of God, which I would say, which I would consider the Spirit of God today, right. speaking to them, and then responding. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like there are some things that you're not just going to find in the Scriptures. And I know here we go, like heretic, right? Like speaking up is like it's like I mean, what is the value of God's voice in this world today? Right. I think, think it matters that God is speaking and moving and it's not something necessarily that we're going to be reading straight from the scriptures. But hey, that's how this whole thing started, right? And it was no Bible. It was just God speaking to humanity and to, into the lives of, of, of humans and they responded to it. Yeah. So why do you think, and we'll end with this, um, why do you think there's a need for inclusive churches today? Because there's not enough. Hmm. Yeah, that's often what I hear too. Yeah. Like when we have people who move away or stuff or they're in another city and they're like, it's going to be really hard to find an inclusive church where we're going, right? Well, and to go a step further, it's why do we need more inclusive churches that are outspoken mm -hmm. about their inclusivity? Yeah, that's good. Because like I said, there's a lot of churches out there that are welcoming. I think welcoming. that's an important distinction. Yeah. That's an important distinction. I agree. Yeah, because it's such a yeah uh, a need. And well, the, the, and, and now you're right, and it's bold, like the boldness and the speaking out. Yeah. And I also think the intersectionality is another term that I think is important to mention. Right? right. Do Do you embody the values you speak about? Right? Because how many yeah. affirming, welcoming, you know, churches that we know that you walk into them, 
and it doesn't feel affirming. Or, right, because well, it's it, it, you know? it's because it's a cultural shift, mm. yeah. and you cannot shift yeah. culture without voicing mm. your values as a as yeah. a as a. I guess what it means. Culture, yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. Yeah. So right. that's why it has to be. I think it has to be. It you know not only like outspoken but just celebrating mm-hmm. those. Mm-hmm. The values that we hold dear. Yeah. Yeah. How will people know, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's what we did here. We just put out that big old, you know, LGBT front pride flag out in front of our property and just said, like, all they're welcome. All they're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, how else would they know that that's really happening here unless we tell them about it? And then to actually, you know, it's one thing to advertise it, but to actually be like, no, we're for real. Yeah. Because people will, will sniff out oh, yeah. the fake <laughs> Big fakeness. Yes. Right, yeah. Yes. Right yep. away. Yep. Yes. Like, oh, okay. Yes. But we're like, no, we're for real. Well, and I think another, you know, another part of that shifting of culture is for people like myself, I'm a cis mm-hmm. white male that grew up in a context that was not inclusive, that was very demeaning towards many different groups. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and I still struggle with the internal thoughts that I grew up with. Mm-hmm. You know, I have to be reminded to not mm-hmm. think a certain way to sure. not, you know, don't say any, don't say the thing that you shouldn't say. Yeah. Um, because that's the that's just the context I grew up in. That's everybody has different stereotypes, and mm-hmm. um, and so for whether it's a church like ours, right, or you know the church that's in Iowa, right, you know, right, um, we have to. It's a continual conversion. Mm-hmm. Conversion is not a one time thing. It's a yeah. continual conversion. Yeah. So we got to talk about it. Yeah. Which is probably open. totally, totally. And by the way, pronouns he and el, by the way, before I forget. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that, you know, what's been interesting about our banner is that you would think, oh, then our church is like 100% queer, right? Like everyone's queer yeah. in our church. And it's yeah. like, no, actually, um, we have grown in, in our percentage. I think we're like 20% now in that range. But what we've picked up is a lot of allies, yeah. a lot of people who have said, no, that's the kind of community I want, like you said, for your children, Eric, um, or like you were saying, Grace, you know, for for you and your and, and Debbie, it's like, you know, um, it was similar to you, Eric, like I really wanted my kids to kind of grow up in that. And and that's all they know, like since we plant, you know, since our very first church plant when the kids were little and they would be the ones setting up the whole church, it was like, <laughs> this space is going to be a queer friendly space. And didn't ever use that language because I didn't have that language when I started my church, but but it was evident that this was the kind of community we wanted to build, yeah. right? That was going to be open to everyone. Yeah. And so I think today, um, in a time where you have uh, a whole large portion of the church, right? Pentecostalism, evangelicalism, Catholicism, um, even some Protestantism that is like, they, they have their stance on yeah. on this and you don't see the affirming and the welcoming, um, you know, I, I think it's a time when we have to start thinking about, by the way, there's, you know, there's something about that, right? That um, smells of religion of whiteness, yeah. which is a book we've been reading and maybe we'll, we can, you know, tap on that in the future and talk about that. But the point is that in humanity, there is this, this thing that's just a, a reality that there are people who are catching it and they're not even in the church. And it is this inclusive, inclusive spirit that the divine is somehow already moving through those that are not even in the church, creating spaces of that are safe, that are welcoming. Um, You know, you often hear me speak about, you know, when I do my sermons, I'll say, you know, you're loved, you're welcome, you're safe, you know, and God is happy with you. It's like, it's this constant reminder that there's an identity that you're part of. And as and in this space and in this church, right, in this congregation, we're going to uplift those values, right? And, and, and I guess what we could end with, just simply this, um, 
if humanity is already affirming it, okay? I'm not even talking necessarily to the church now, just yeah. from just from humanity's perspective. If, you know, the Dodgers are like supporting, you know what I mean? They have a queer night, you know, the Lakers, you know, it's like, these, those are my teams, by the way, you know, Lakers, Dodgers. Mm-hmm. It's like, they're, they have queer, like it's already happening, right? Okay, why is the church still holding on to this thing that, Let's just be honest, it hasn't been working since day one. It's only been hurtful and painful and destructive, shall we say, sinful. Yeah. And now we're seeing God affirming it too within spaces like ours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why still the rejection? What, why still say no? If you're gay, if you're trans, if you're queer, that is sinful and you're going to hell or you are not, you know, you need to change your ways, you know. Or even worse, we need to pray it out of you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why why still people holding on to that? Fear. I think is a big part of it. I think uh for the religious leaders who are ready for creating those spaces that are welcome. Um, maybe they're afraid that the ones who tied the most, <laughs> uh, yeah, right, right, right. you know, might be offended. Yeah. Right. Leave um, the church. Stop giving. Yeah. yeah. Um, or maybe they just, they don't feel like there's enough support. I don't know. I think fear, I, I would say that fear is going to be the. I think fear was the word that came up for me as well. The first thing is like fear. Yeah. Fear of a lot of things. Yeah. And it happens. I mean, we saw it here in my history. You know, the moment we uplifted trans people or queer people into leadership, into places of prominence and mm. and representation, people bowed out. Yeah. And people yeah. stopped giving. People stopped coming. And you don't think I was afraid? Yeah, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the answer is yes, afraid. But this is the thing. It's like what kind of what kind of God do we serve? Mm-hmm. What kind of God is with us truly? Mm-hmm. And it's like a real question. Like, are you in this because you know, because you think like it's gonna be supported by a group of humans, or are you in this because you think God's behind you in this thing? Right. Or are you in this because it's a Easy paycheck. Yeah, that's the other one, right? Because I could just like, you know, you know, milk this and, and, and retire or not have to do anything or not. I just think that's like a real question that everybody has to wrestle with. Right. And all that to say to those that are out there is like, yeah, people left the church. Yes. Yes, it was scary times. Yes, it was, you know, people trying to, you know, even, you know, get rid of me, right, as yeah. the pastor of this church. Yeah. But I stood my ground because I know that I don't serve or work for people. I really work and serve for God. And if God, you brought me here to do this in Hawaii, you know, I'm from LA, by the way. Like, if you couldn't tell, it's like, you know, like, you got to back me up. And, and, and here we are, you know, you know, almost four years later, it's like, yeah, we did this thing. God did this thing. And We're still doing this. And still doing this. Still doing this. Absolutely, because it's, it's, it's not going away. Yeah. 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 Still, still. Are you going to say something about that? All right. No, is that our church is growing. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we got... That's a testament. That is the testament. I, mean, I, I We were recognized, right, as one of these top 20 ELCA congregations in the nation, right? Yes. Over 9,000 congregations that are doing intersectional, inclusive work. And, and our denomination, the ELCA, has recognized that. And I think it's a testament, right? It's a... It's a it's a response from the divine. Um, yeah, maybe the, not saying um, that it's it's a, that we're a church that's growing, but we're definitely a church that's transforming. Mm. Because yeah, same way I like think um, I think as the church continues to transform into a space that's welcoming, yeah, yeah, and that's authentically welcoming, yeah, um, you also have people who are losing its grip. Big time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's some who are like, "True, this is." I I was here for a while to see what would happen. Yes. See if it would go back, right. or 
Yeah. You know, it would lose steam or, and they can't, they can't wait any longer. Yeah. And that's it's a good measurement, I think, of growth. Yeah. Right. That it's not always just numerical. Right. Which is yeah, definitely that's happening, but but also like this 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 kind of liber. I, I would almost use the word like this healing of it all, right? Yeah. Like the the actual church, the congregation, the people are being healed from the or being liberated, right, from the systemic yeah. uh, sins and embedded sins of in the church. Yeah, yeah. so much so that now. I don't know. I just had this re- realization recently where I was, you know, in church and, and I'm looking across the congregation and I, and I know there are, I can put the label, right? Sure, I can be sure. like a trans, <laughs> gay, okay, yeah, yeah. person right. of color, right. but I don't think of it that way anymore. It's mm-hmm. more of like, oh, that's this person, that's mm-hmm. this person. Like I know them personally and care about them, mm-hmm. you know, deeply. Mm-hmm. Um, that I don't see any, I don't, it seems so cliche to sound like I don't see labels. <laughs> I don't see color. Right, right. But now, but it's, I see it less in, 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 in the divisive way. I yeah. see it more in the inclusive way. Yes. Yes. And this is kind of what I, I mentioned this past Sunday. It's like, how can you love something that you don't know? Yeah. Like, it's very difficult to love someone you do not know. But once, or the other way to say it, it's very hard to hate someone you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's it, it just is, and I think this is the reality of this. By the way, another grounding, in my opinion, biblically, loving God and loving neighbor. Right. You know, they come to Jesus. These religious leaders are essentially saying, "What is the greatest commandment?" Jesus, is like, look, I want to sum up the whole Torah, like the basically your whole Hebrew understanding. You you need to love God and you need to love your neighbor, but you need to love yourself, and loving God. Is is a and it manifests its way in the way you love your neighbor. Yeah. So it's all interlinked. It's all interconnected. And so to me, like they plainly said, is to love the trans neighbor, to love the gay neighbor, right? The lesbian neighbor. It's like to love the, that neighbor is essentially your way of saying I love God and I love myself. If you're not doing that, I, I just find it find it very interesting how you. Can can love God and love yourself, but not love, love neighbor. neighbor. Yeah. 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 Well, friends, I think we'll stop there. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Grace, for sharing your thoughts and uh, your your uh, experiences. Uh, I, pre- I hope you all enjoyed uh, this kind of chat. And just look out; we'll hopefully get another um, another topic here coming up, and we can uh, expand on that. Uh, if you need any uh, any questions or you have any thoughts or anything, you could always reach us at info at calvarybythesea.org or check us out at our, our website or socials uh, as well. All right. Much love. Blessings to you guys out there. Take care. Bye.